Hello and welcome to another edition of Witness. I'm Raggy Omar. Hear the words wham, pow, karash, and you know you've entered the surreal world of comics. This two-dimensional universe is populated by superheroes with superpowers, but one man, Naif al Mutawa, decided to take on the Hulk, Spider-Man and Captain America in an ideological battle to prove that being the biggest, strongest or greenest can be outwitted by other, less obvious attributes. Naive got his inspiration from the Quran and calls his superheroes the 99 after the 99 attributes of Allah such as compassion, forgiveness and honour. Although Naif, by his own admission, is a long way from a superhero's physique, there are autobiographical similarities. The main hero, Dr. Ramzi Razem, is, like the creator, a Kuwaiti psychologist. Filmmaker Amir Amirani talked with Dr. Naif al Mutawa to find out where he got his inspiration for the series. So, if you're tired of America's dominance, at least in comics, and would like to see a better world, then perhaps the 99 are for you. So I was in a London cab going from Edgware Road to Harrods. I just finished business school, it was the summer, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And my sister turned to me and she said, Naif, do you remember you told me that after school you'd go back to writing and I'd illustrate? She's actually very talented. And I said, yeah, I remember. She said, well, what do you think? I said, Summer, for me to go back now, it's got to have the potential of Pokemon. And this is where luck or fate first struck my project because had I said Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or any man, you know, the 99 would not have been born because what happened in my mind was the following. I said Pokemon. My next thought was there had been a fatwa issued against Pokemon in this region. My next thought was, my God, who are these people and who appointed them to be spokespeople for Islam? My next thought was of Allah and how disappointed he must be. My next thought was that Allah had 99 attributes and that brought me full circle back to Pokemon which is a concept of 300 attributes. And at the end of that cab ride, I turned to my sister and I said, what do you think of this? And she liked the idea and I kind of just captured my mind. And I went off and, and immediately created the, uh, the business plan and went off uh, seeking money. That moment of inspiration in a London taxi four years ago has led to the creation of The 99, the first comic in the world to feature Islamic characters. In the West, children have been reading and watching comics and cartoons for decades, with characters such as Superman and Spider-Man becoming part of everyday language. But in the Middle East, children have had very few, if any, homegrown comics. Even today, most children watch videos imported from the West or based on Western stories. Now, the 99 is set to change all that. One of the comic's main artists is John McRae from Northern Ireland. As far as I'm aware, there is absolutely no tradition of comics within most of the Middle Eastern countries. I mean, I'm from Northern Ireland, and why is a Northern Irish artist working on a Middle Eastern comic with mainly Middle Eastern superheroes? Because they couldn't really find anybody who could draw. It really is a sort of story of good versus evil. It's just a solid, entertaining comic that tries to show characters who normally don't get seen in American comics, I guess, in a good light and being the heroes for once. Uh, Muslim characters, uh, African-Caribbean characters, there are, there are white, there are all sorts of diverse characters in this and they are all sort of represented in, in good and bad. The, the villains are a, a multicultural group as well. Naif's original concept was to create 99 characters, each one based on one of the attributes of Allah, as identified in the Quran. The backstory of the 99 takes place between 1258 and 1492. In 1258, the Mongols invaded Baghdad and destroyed it. And all the books from Dar al-Hikmah Library, which means House of Wisdom, which was the most famous library of its time, 
were dumped in the Tigris River and the Tigris changes color with ink. I use that story because it's a story anybody growing up in this part of the world knows. It's been passed on generation after generation. I go in and I rewrite that history. I claim that the Mongols invade Baghdad to destroy the library. That's their intent. But the librarians find out and they get together a special solution of king's water that when mixed with 99 stones, we'll be able to save all that culture and wisdom and tolerance of the ages. But the Mongols get there first, and the books and the king's water get dumped in the Tigris. Some librarians are able to escape with their lives and go into hiding, and over the course of days and weeks, dip the 99 stones into the Tigris one by one and suck up all the accumulated wisdom that we think is gone. Those stones are then smuggled as three prayer beads of 33 stones each. 33 go on the Silk Route to China, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. 33 are spread between Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. And 33 of the gemstones are smuggled on Columbus's ships and are spread in the New World, a metaphor for the spreading of Islam without mentioning Islam. And now it's 2007, and there are 99 heroes from 99 countries, each one of which is imbued with a certain power, almost evenly split between boys and girls, and they're ready to save the world. For me, in the end, the 99 attributes are attributes that not only all Muslims value, but humanity values. Things like generosity, strength, wisdom, foresight, mercy. You name one civilization, Muslim or non-Muslim, that has a theology or is agnostic, that doesn't espouse those as basic human values. The hero is Dr. Ramzi Razam, a character based on the founder himself. I knew that I wanted to have this concept based on the attributes of Allah, but how was I going to do it? What were they going to be? Where were they going to be from? All this stuff that, you know, when I first wrote the first iteration of the character guide, the main character was Kuwaiti, a Kuwaiti psychologist. Why? Because I am, and I understand what being a Kuwaiti psychologist is. And the 99 all had problems. Why? Because that's my work. And, but that's all different now. He's not Kuwaiti. We don't even say where he's from anymore. The 99 are from 99 different countries. They don't have problems. Uh, so a lot of stuff has changed and evolved because the more people you bring into it, the more thoughts, the more ideas, the richer the content becomes. In recent years, there's been a blossoming of comics and cartoons drawn from Middle Eastern and Islamic culture and produced in Iran, Egypt and America. As a young boy in Kuwait, Nafal Mutawa was sent to a predominantly Jewish summer camp in America, an experience that shaped his outlook so much, he now sends his own children there. Reading and camp come together in the second grade for me. I was eight years old, and that's pretty much where I discovered comics. This camp was mostly American. Um, people from all religions, Jewish, Christian. There was no politics at the camp. The person that ran the camp was someone who always had a smile on his face and accepted everybody for who they were and you know the good and bad they did at the camp, nothing else. And so it was, it was my first experience of really engaging other people and other cultures. Nave's experience at camp left him with a burning desire to write. I've always wanted to be a writer ever since I was a child, and I dabbled with different forms of writing. But To Bounce or Not to Bounce is the first book that I wrote. Um, it illustrated very simple concept, you know, 500 words or less with the extent of my drawing ability. I can't draw better than this. But it was able to capture the imagination of thousands of people. And uh, it was written as a reaction to somebody being fired for their religion here in Kuwait back in 95. Uh, and went on to win an award from UNESCO in 97 for children's literature in the service of tolerance. As well as his idea for the comic, Naif was quick to form an idea of how the business should work. In the beginning, when the, when the idea of the 99 came to me in the cab, you know, I focused on creating the concept and thinking about raising money from investors and doing a business plan. And, and I was in, uh, had gone back to New York, I was in a Howard Johnson's uh, and started sketching out the business plan with a friend of mine. Basically, this is the other side of it. There's a cow there, some fried eggs and pancakes, and then 
this stuff which we don't eat, you know, sausages. And on the back here is the first iteration of the business plan. And basically it takes you through the businesses I wanted to be in. Publishing, licensing, and entertainment animation, which is the, which is the field that we're growing into now with the increase in capital. But these are the businesses I'm in. And I keep this with me here as a constant reminder of how it started so as not to lose sight of, of, of my journey. And I need to always be aware of that because, you know, so as not to kind of let things get to my head. The comic that I worked on when I broke into comics was a comic called Troubled Souls and it was about the troubles in Northern Ireland. And I, I won't pretend that it didn't cross my mind that perhaps it might get myself and the writer Garth Ennis into trouble at any point. I mean, it didn't, but it crossed your mind. And then to sort of come onto this comic and sort of think, well, I wonder if I'm getting myself in trouble again or possibly getting myself in trouble working on this. But of course, that's nonsense. I mean, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's entertainment and hopefully people will take it as such and uh, they can and uh, the people who read it will, will get something out of it and hopefully it'll give, get a message across about being sort of tolerant of each other and, and good to each other. I mean, those are, I guess, the simple basic tenets of it. Just let's be nice to each other and to de treat each other decently. Nathan hired the experienced comic writer Fabian Nicenza. Fabian is somebody who's written for X-Men, and X-Men is a multi-character property, just like the 99, and, you know, different heroes, different powers, just like the 99. We sit down, we, you know, we come up with the different plots, the synopses, the actual writing, writing of the actual uh, dialogue, he does. That needs a particular kind of talent, which I do not possess. I really like the Segway design. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's like plausible, it's believable. Yeah. The rules of the universe are set, the initial stories are done, now I become the editor, so if something doesn't work for me, I'll say something, we'll change it, but I'm not involved as I used to be. So we definitely want you to approve it, because we want it to be something you can wear <laughs> when you do your public presentations. Yeah. I'll be back with more after the break.